Hello. So every year in Monterey, California, the Pebble Beach Concourse occurs, and this is where you can see the most elite of the elite vehicles. So these are all the wealthiest people in the world showing off their toys. And uh, I highly recommend you go. I managed to go one time because I lived in California for almost a decade, and I drove my car up there thinking, yeah, I'd be able to get a motel somewhere. That whole city was totally booked out. So if you're going to go to this Pebble Beach, you better book a hotel room a, a year in advance is what I would recommend. Maybe it's even longer. I ended up actually camping out in a cul-de-sac. I took my camping uh, thermarest and I just laid it underneath my car and I slept in the cul-de-sac on, on the road. Um, and then I was pleasantly awakened by a weird noise and it turned out to be an ant crawling inside of my ear. So that wasn't particularly great. I literally had to dig an ant out of my ear. That's quite an interesting alarm. Uh, anyhow, um, I mentioned this because I can't find pictures of the, of the model we're going to look at. It's called a Cadillac V16 Cabriolet. And the reason why I can't find pictures is these cars are all coach built. I don't think any one of them are identical. They're all handmade bodies and stuff like that. So, racing champions... Uh, they seem to make pretty good models. They don't claim to be any particular scale, but I did manage to pull up the uh, wheelbase of this thing, and it's supposed to be, at least in 1931, 3759 millimeters, which divided by 64 is 58.7. So let's see if it's even in the ballpark. Well, it's close, actually. It's 58-something. So actually I would say that probably is it's good enough. It's close enough to fit in with your other 164 scale cars. Let's take a back here, back view here. So <coughs> from 1930 to 1940, the V16 was the top of the line from Caddy. Uh, 10 different body styles. Jeez, that's a lot. And that was the most expensive, of course. Only 4,000 or so were made. Uh, 11 year production run. And then basically they're taking two eight-cylinder motors and they shared a common crankshaft. And the Wikipedia is telling me that... I'm trying to get the displacement here. Okay. 7.4 liters. So 7.4 liters divided by 16. It's actually not, not really large cylinders. Well, I guess it's okay. Anyways, it doesn't matter. You know, this, I'm sure all these cars are probably extremely expensive to buy at a place like this. But we're talking about this model here. So let's crack this open. Let's take a look at the details. I guess my biggest criticism of these uh, cars are the, the wheels. But um, it's pretty hard to make wire wheels in, in any scale. Especially 164. It's so small. So I can't really fault racing champions. I mean, they look like they're kind of wiry, right? So I guess I'm okay with it. Uh, this one has better tires than the last model, where it ha which it had really weird wheel design that covered most of the tire up. Mm, actually, I might be mistaken on this one as well. Let's see here. Yep, it does seem to be the same style wheel, so... Uh, basically, the, the tires should be taller and the wheel rim should be smaller. You should be able to see more of the rubber instead of the chrome, at least on a, on a car from this era. Okay, but anyways, we've got uh, apparently three hinges holding the suicide doors. Handle sticking out. Some, I'm not sure what that would be. Maybe there's a battery or something in there. Interesting little uh, decoration there. It is protruding quite a bit. And then we got the uh, convertible top in the up position, which is kind of too bad. I think it would have been nicer in the down position. Uh, what's going on here? Not sure why you would have ribbing there. Maybe that's a trunk. I I would guess this is a <coughs> excuse me. I would guess this is a rumble seat. You know, it pops up and there's a seat for two people back there. Some tail lamps are painted on. Separate chrome uh, bumper. Nice details being separate. All right, it looks pretty much the same. Uh, I think it, these vents might be able to pop open for additional cooling. And then the front, unfortunately, it's just painted ghostly white. These headlamps would have been nice if there are inserts. Uh, some turning, maybe these are turn signals. I'm not sure, again, because 
we don't know what model, what real vehicle this is modeled after. Like, I don't know what the coach, coach builder's name is of this thing. You notice there's quite a bit of axle play here, though. So that's kind of weird. I guess if you're really picky, you could take the wheel off and put some spacers in there. Uh, I'm going to just leave it the way it is. I'm lazy. Okay, so what is this? Oh, nice. All right. Okay, so these engine covers do come off. Unfortunately, I mean, look at this panel gap. That is, that's the worst one I've seen yet in die cast. So, there we go. It's just not worth it for me. I mean, where's the, where are the exhaust pipes, right? Where, where's, where's the air filter? Where's the air entering that engine and where's it going? So, that's, I mean, it's a sales gimmick, right? It's a gimmick trying to sell you that. Hey, look at an engine, and the engine looks like garbage. Uh, just make a nice model, exterior view. Wow, again, that is really bad. What is nice, though, is, you know, the this orange is separate from the black frame. So it's kind of like a real car. You know, this Cadillac would have been a frame, and then you take your frame and engine to a coach builder, and then they build a body around it. So that is nice and realistic. Okay, so there's some printing, very fine printing. Unfortunately, I can't. It's black on brown, but I was just hoping it actually says it's Cadillac V16, but it doesn't. It's nice to know when this thing was made, relatively recent. But uh, for posterity, we you know, it's going to be hard for someone to know what this is. If some kid just picked this up off a the shelf, they'll be like, oh, that's cool, what is it? No, no idea. So, that's too bad. Let's see here, I didn't even notice there's like a crosshatch texture here in the grill, and there's some sort of flat spot, but no printing for an emblem. Okay. Well, still, all in all, I think it's a pretty cool model. Um, let's see about that interior. Okay, there's a steering wheel. Basic seat there, which is probably what it looks like in the real car. All right. You know, these racing champions, they aren't really expensive die casts, so... And I'm not aware of a nicer looking uh, classic pre-war Great Depression uh, vehicle. So, I think they're good. I think they're they're going to stay in my collection. I'm, I'm going to keep them for a while. Let's put it up on the spin thing here. I actually have a grass spin master. That's actually a, a cork coaster with some hobby grass glued to it. And then uh, I have this other video already up on uh, this one. This is the Duesenberg from Racing Champions as well. The, only, the big problem with this Duesenberg is the, the sidewall of the rim is just way too tall and it blocks a lot of the tire. Whereas the tire should be a lot thicker than the side of the, the wheel. So which do you guys like? Which uh, model do you guys like more? I'm going more towards the Roadster myself, the Duesenberg. It just looks cooler because the top is down. So it's kind of interesting that they would choose to make it with the top up. Maybe the thing is really ugly with the top down. It might just have a big puff of uh, fabric or something like that. So, Oh well, anyways, I'm pretty happy I got both of these in the collection. I don't have many, uh, you know, uh, models from uh, before the Great Depression. So it's cool to have these. You know, this is a different time. So, okay. Alright, well I guess that's it, so I'll see you guys in the next review. Thanks for watching.